People of YouTube, welcome to my channel. I'm Aaron, a software startup CEO who's finally completely powering his house with a Tesla solar roof. Today I'm going to be discussing the top 10 things I learned during the solar roof installation process. But before we begin, each time you like and subscribe to my channel, it brings a little joy to my life. Because unlike most solar channels, I'm not paid by YouTube, I'm not paid by Tesla, and I don't own a solar company. So please like and subscribe. I wish someone would have made this video before I placed my order. Not because it would have detracted me from ordering a roof, but it would have helped me prepare. All right, let's get started. The 10th thing that I learned was to not judge Tesla's customer service until you've experienced the entire journey. During my depths of despair on whether or not my solar roof would be completed, I would surf the Tesla solar Reddit and read all the other folks that were in similar situations as my own. It was relaxing and calming to know that there were other people in similar situations as myself. However, it was crazy sad whenever I would read a Tesla Solar Reddit post about how awesome Tesla Solar's customer service is because of one small, single interaction that they had. So please do not judge the experience until you've lived it until the very end. All right, the ninth thing that I learned through this process is you are going to lose your gutters. I know that there's a few folks on the Tesla Solar Reddit saying that they did not lose their gutters, and they are telling the truth. However, I would just plan that you're going to lose yours. Once the subcontractor comes out and has made up their mind that your gutters are coming down, your gutters are coming down. And they're gonna tell you that they're gonna leave them to possibly put back onto your home. This is common practice. I've had roofs replaced before. You typically lose the gutters as part of the process, and typically the contractor says that they can put them back on. But nine times out of 10, your gutters are usually bent, scratched, and left in a pile after being removed. And you don't want those gutters back on your home. So plan to purchase new gutters after your roof installation. Number eight, plan that your landscaping will be trampled all over. This is not a Tesla solar roof roofing issue. This is any roof roofing issue. There's something about roofers and landscaping and landscape lighting that they absolutely hate. If a roofer sees a happy, healthy piece of landscaping, they are attracted to it like magnets and they are gonna trample on it, jump up and down on it, destroy it. If they see a light, a landscape light, um, that landscape light is going over. Leave no healthy landscaping left behind. This is normal for any roofing operation and it also is normal for a new Tesla solar roof as well. Number seven, you could end up with multiple Tesla solar gateways. If you have a normal home with under 20 kilowatts of solar, um, you probably won't end up with multiple gateways. But if you could end up with multiple gateways, you better plan for it. Multiple Tesla solar gateways turns your Tesla solar roof into multiple homes. This is due to the Tesla solar gateways only supporting 200 amp service. My home has 400 amp service, which required multiple gateways to be installed. The issue becomes where they run the power to from those gateways into your home. The easiest way to understand this is if you have two sub panels one that does the first floor of your home and one that does the second floor of your home and each one of them receives a gateway. And if those gateways don't create an equivalent amount of solar to each panel, then the first floor of your home may end up with longer time off grid than the second floor of your home. Also, if you had calculated how many power walls you need to run your house off grid and they split it into two systems and the two different systems aren't matched, your power wall calculations may be off. 
I'm currently dealing with this right now. As you'll see here, I've got the uh, one floor of my home is creating 10 kilowatts. The other floor is creating five kilowatts. Um, so there is a level of concern about that imbalance that I have. However, Tesla is coming out in a number of days to review the configuration and maybe they'll find something to remediate to solve the problem. So I'm not worried quite yet. Number six, if you're having any issues uh, communicating with your advisor, uh, just work with the local teams when they're on site. The local Tesla team that shows up on site will identify you as the homeowner and will want to take care of you. I was able to work with the local Tesla team whenever the installation would create a new cosmetic issue. They were quick to act on my ideas and to provide feedback. Um, also, the designs called for the power walls to be placed outdoors and they worked with me to move the power walls into my garage. Number five, Tesla is not there to make your house look better. They're there to install a Tesla solar roof. So if the Tesla solar plans for your roof or simply the Tesla solar documentation for installing the roof says that the installers have to do something that would make your home look less appealing, they're going to go ahead and do it. The local Tesla team does want your home to look nice, but they still have to follow the rules. For example, if you have a multi-story stucco exterior home and one of the walls on your multi-story home butts up against a roof, you're going to end up with flashing. Flashing is metal used to keep water from intruding wherever a roof meets a wall. If you're using a good roofing company, what they would do during a re-roof is to remove the stucco, place the flashing and counter flashing up against the wall, and then replace the stucco. However, the Tesla Solar Roof product only supports counter flashing placed over the stucco. So let's go ahead and look at the before and after photos of my wall. Here's my old roof with the flashing underneath the stucco. Notice that you don't see any of the metal shown. It's a very clean installation. Now here's the Tesla solar roof. Notice the six inch or so high piece of counter flashing that's black over the stucco. I spent many countless hours speaking with Tesla trying to find another way to do this without putting this counter flashing on top of the stucco and they just couldn't figure out a way. Another thing to prepare for are the drip edges. The drip edges of the Tesla roof are aluminum or silver colored. This may not be a big deal for some folks, but if your drip edge is color coordinated with the rest of your home, it will look different and you need to be prepared for that. I really wish the drip edge could be ordered to match the color of the home. Number four, it appears that it's not easy for Tesla to tell you that you're getting what you paid for. I have approximately 550 70 watt solar tiles on my roof. That means at least 55 MCI quick disconnects and at least 12 lines coming into the inverters. When the Tesla electricians set up this installation, they simply checked for volts and amps on the lines. But as far as I could tell, there's no way for them to count the number of MCIs that are reporting home, at least while they're on site at my home. I asked the electricians that were on site whether there was a way for them to ensure I'm getting what I paid for, um, which drew puzzled looks. I've built some pretty complex products before, and 100% of them didn't work on the first try. So do you think your complex solar roof will work on the first attempt? I'm sure internally Tesla does have some sort of process to make sure that customers are getting what they paid for. However, I perceive that they don't, and I'm the customer, and perception is reality. If they want to fix customer perception around this, maybe create an automated report that the advisor could send the client, giving them proof that everything that they bought 
is actually on their roof, powered on, cabled up, and working well. Number three, it appears the diodes are located on each individual tile. Solar diodes are important because a string of solar panels are only as powerful as the lowest lit panel. The way solar manufacturers fix this is by placing diodes either at a panel level or within the panel or outside the panel that turn off components when they don't create enough power. I was always curious on how diodes worked with a Tesla solar tile. I'm no solar expert, but it looks like each Tesla solar tile has its own diode. Let's look at it. This is the back of a Tesla solar tile. Here are the cables used to connect it uh, with the other tiles, and all the cables run to this box right here. Um, I assume this is the diode. It's great to know that each individual tile could have its own diode. That way, if one tile is shaded, it doesn't impact the performance of the entire string. Number two, please remember that the local Tesla folks that show up to your home are normal human people wearing Tesla shirts. Some of the Tesla folks that show up to your home will be great craftsmen who are proud of their trade and want to make things as pretty as the documentation will allow them to do. And other folks that show up to your home aren't going to be all that good. I mean, look at these holes in my soffit that the electricians drilled. Don't you think they could have made them the same size as the pipe? And finally, the number one thing I learned about solar roofs dealing with my install. They're beautiful. Toodles.